My name is uh, Kenneth Chingpo Ko, goes my surname. Mm. And I'm from uh, Hong Kong, China. Being a Quaker, I think, is, for me, it, it is um, feeling that the Quaker testimonies um, sits well with me. I agree with it. Right? Um, the usual ones of uh, simplicity and speaking the truth. Uh, but I think, like everybody else, the one that is most important is seeing that of God in everyone. And not just mentally, but also um, in daily life. Um, it is not as easy as it sounds. Because when you are in a situation where uh, you have um, can people like your enemies, especially within the Quaker community, who for any reason at all, or for no reason at all, um, makes you hurt, hurts you, then uh, trying to uh, forgive him or her, trying to see that of God in them, uh, is sometimes very difficult. Not just the victims, uh, but also the victimizer. Is, it has that of God in them. Sometimes it, it's, it's pretty hard, because one example comes to mind in the, in the uh, uh, Norwegian uh, man, I don't know his name, but he, he killed some 77 people, you know, and uh, he's still adamant that he's not done anything wrong. To see him as part of me, he is, or to see him as the same tell of God as that about me. Sometimes it's pretty difficult. Yeah. So that is, uh, that to me is, is uh, what it means to be a Quaker. Well, the, <coughs> the theme itself is, has three parts, and, and as my section, the Asia West Pacific uh, theme, um, the young people there, three of them sort of uh, well on each aspect of it. Um, I think the last part of the book um, is that this world, uh, even though it's created by God, but there's a lot of problems. And Thomas Owens, who was a speaker in, from our section, um, focused on the, the us and them uh, division. In my home group, uh, we, we um, discuss um, sexual openness about Dudu do, uh, is talking about her niece being. Um, no, I'm not sure. It's okay. <coughs> Someone says that uh, the niece has been raped and so um, became a, 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 a HIV carrier. Um, and so there's a lot of um, um, brokenness in, in this world. Um, in the second part of the, the king, Kingdom of God, there are two ways of, of viewing it. Um, either you, you can think of uh, Jesus' second coming and establishing the Kingdom of God on earth, or you can see this, this world, present world, is part of the Kingdom of God. And I think I have um, a more attuned to the second, the, the second type, that Kingdom of God is present with us, um, if we all live according to what uh, God wants us to do, love uh, yourself, love your neighbor as yourself. Um, the first part, sort and light, I think it's just um, uh, bringing joy and um, laughter to people you come into contact with and sharing um, love, loving your neighbors as yourself. Um, my home meeting 
uh, actually came back, came down from China in 1952, and um, it has been in continuous existence, even though it's pretty small and has remained small. Um, I joined it um, by convincement, as the Quaker terminology says, in about 1983, and then. Um, became click of meeting from 1996 to about 2004. I see um, Hong Kong as a focal point in outreach to China because in uh, the years in 19, before 1949 uh, there were uh, about 5,000 members. Um, mainly concentrated in, uh, in, in Chengdu, Sichuan, with some others like in Nanjing and in, in Shanghai and Beijing. Uh, these Quakers have, uh, well, they decided to join the three self uh, churches. Um, and uh, there is, in Taiwan, there, there are uh, evangelical friends, I think about three to 4,000. Um, in Hong Kong, we uh, um, have uh, tried many times to, to uh, approach them to see whether they would like to join the family of Quakers. And they have been pretty um, uh, negative in the, in the, in the you know, but I think I would like to um, find a way to extend the invitation and try to incorporate them into to the uh, family of, of Quakers. The other thing I hope to see happen is to be able to approach the third generation Quakers in China, who even though the uh, name has disappeared, who has because of the family or upbringing, have still very positive uh, feeling about Quakers and missed the opportunity of being Quaker. So uh, I liked uh, to rebuild Hong Kong Meeting as a platform uh, to translate uh, Quaker material into Chinese, to have a website or to have some way where people who are interested in Quakerism or Westerners who, whose parents have uh, served in China in any capacity uh, or have taught in China would like to see um, kind of continuation of Quaker presence in China. I think it's, it's in one of the early um, silent worship that I heard um, a voice ministry uh, and the lady said um, she had this message that she has um, hidden in her heart and it's a very simple sentence you have what you need right. um, I kind of felt the same um, well from the um, inspirational point of view so, God speaking to me that that side of it. I feel I am very grateful that um, I've been, been very privileged. Uh, I went to the best high schools, the best universities in the U.S. Uh, I taught in Hong Kong uh, in universities and, and, and in high school. Uh, but on a personal level, I think living in Hong Kong uh, really uh, I've never seen any lack. Of, uh, you know, but I think part of that is, is that um, as a Quaker, living the testimony of simplicity, um, I, my family always have what we needed. But the other side of that is, is that um, if, if we live, we remember who we, who we are, then it's not the material possessions uh, that makes what we are. So I, f I feel that that saying, you, ha you always have what you need, is very, very true. And if you live by that, then you will feel you'll be much more happy, joyful.